Hey there, everyone. I'm Joel of the Comic Book Cast Podcast Network, and when Sal asked me if I wanted to take part in this brand new fan favorite series, I jumped at the opportunity. And the comic I chose to talk to you all about today is Punisher Volume 4, Issue Number 3, American Ugly, from September 1st, 2001. Wow, already over a decade old. That is amazing. I feel so old. Now, why did I choose this particular issue, you might be asking yourself? Well, it holds a special place in my heart and marks a turning point in the history of my own comic fandom. You see, I originally found this issue in a scummy pawn shop, not unlike some of the places the Punisher likes to visit. I live in rural Canada, and the nearest comic store was like two towns over, so as a lifelong fan of superheroes, I had to take whatever I could get. Clearly some poor fan, some poor schmuck, hawked their incomplete collection, but luckily their loss turned out to be my gain, because it was this issue that started my lifelong fascination with the work of Garth Ennis. You see, the comic was part of the Marvel Knights line, a big initiative by Joe Quesada and Jimmy Palmiotti to reinvent, reinvigorate, and basically revitalize the fledgling at the time Marvel Comics. And for the Punisher, they tasked the same man who would give the world Preacher to give Frank Castle a makeover for the 2000s, and to stay on the book basically for as long as he wanted. And oh boy, did he. And it's as far as I'm concerned, is the definitive Punisher writer, and it's stories like this that prove why. You see, Frank Castle is hot on the heels of a hitman codename the Russian after he and Spider-Man both got attacked by him. The revenge quest takes our anti-hero to Grand Nixon Island, a lawless mecca of mercenaries and killers based out of international waters. The island is run by the brutal General Krikov. Now, traditionally, inventing new Punisher baddies is something of an uphill battle, because if Frank does his job, then they're going to die by the story's end. What's cool about Ennis is he always tried to infuse character into the villains, while also making damn sure that they deserved what was coming to them. But Ennis is a writer also also known for infusing his work with dark humor. And the standout moment is the Russian getting put back together only now with a giant pair of guns. And I don't mean the lead-spewing kind. Special note should also be given to Steve Dillon's artwork. While other artists try and make their stuff look as nice as possible, Dillon has a true eye for the ugly. No supermodels here, you feel like you could actually run into these kinds of people that he draws. A lot of what Garth Ennis did in his Marvel Knights Punisher run would serve as the backbone for the 2004 Thomas Jane Punisher movie. And General Krikoff and Grand Nixon Island would also appear in the criminally underrated PS2 Punisher game. Hey, seriously, Violation, when you're done making all those Saints Row games, please go back and make a new Punisher. Pretty, pretty please with skulls on top. Garth Ennis would continue to be a mainstay on Punisher, eventually leading it into the even darker and more serious Max series, but that is an episode for another day.